Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we're here. This is going to be week number six of the ABL and we are up against the reigning champion, I believe, Celo and his Copenhagen Canines. Now, this is going to be a really, really tough matchup, right? So, I've, I've watched a couple of his matches and he goes really hard with Trick Room and he has a lot of scary options that I'm not entirely um, sure to deal with. Although, I feel like the kind of matchup that I brought here kind of works out really, really well against his team. And uh, we're actually here with a postcom because there was a little bit of lost audio and to be completely honest a lot losing audio is going to be a little bit of a theme i mean you can see that this was uh recorded live when when this battle happened but something happened to the audio I actually have part of the audio but it's really not good in what happened to it but that's a whole other thing we're just gonna watch former me actually battle but i'm gonna have to talk through what i was kind of thinking at the time so a couple of the biggest things that i feel like i have to worry about are kind of leads like tokus next to then crow's dusk main because i I could definitely see follow me trick room situation that's the thing that i'm most fearful of and i could definitely see him wanting to lead off with the gyarados he has a lot of different options so what i kind of wanted to do was lead off with a specs chandelure and uh the the upshot of this right is that i can go for straight up specs overheat and that's going to give me the best chance to oko to just straight up and pairing it up with the scarf klefki is going to be fun because it gives me one of two options right either we look directly into a potential follow me toga kiss in which case i can scarfed uh thunder wave and then followed up with a hex which is going to be the same base power as as overheat and again it's always going to be a roll but it's going to give me a pretty decent roll to kind of ko from full with that uh thunder wave hex combination or if we are really fearful of the trick room lead or some kind of a trick room lead i can trick a scarf onto the necrozma and kind of neutralize it for a lot of this matchup so that's really what my leads are kind of aiming for in this kind of a situation because i really did have to be fearful of a couple different lead options i am really fearful of redirection from the tokus and i'm really fearful of turn one trick room from that necrozma so those are the biggest things that i'm fearful of going into this matchup okay so we're going into this battle straight up and like i said i have a lot of kind of lead options that i have to worry about um but here we see the cinderace next to the gotha reader now this was not a matchup that i really expected to see i really didn't think too much about the center race in general because um i was so more fearful of his trick room options he really did seem to like his trick room options in previous weeks and he does seem to lean on trick room quite a bit so that's what i was really most fearing and coming into this matchup that's going to end the togekiss in general is really really difficult for my team to kind of manage so i really had to deal with the togekiss but um again this lead was a really difficult one for me to kind of manage however I think my thinking here is that no matter what, I can kind of get through this in, in, interaction reasonably okay. So I obviously know that I'm not that my Chandelure is not going to do a whole lot of damage to this thing, but my, my Klefki's trapped in, so I kind of have to kind of um, keep keep pace with damage while my Klefki can kind of um, wait out these turns. But the Gothrita goes for the fake out, which really is not great for me in this moment because I really did want to get up some kind of an iron defense help me kind of take these hits a little bit better and uh he just goes straight up for a max darkness i have to assume off of sucker punch and that's a straight up oko on turn one um and here's where i'm really you know starting to panic a little bit now i think obviously the better play because ghost types can't be can't be trapped would be to switch out but at the same time there's so few things that i would want to switch out into a max darkness from a cinderace which is honestly free to be really really offensive because it doesn't really have too many speed stats against my team to kind of hit so it has a lot of freedom to be adamant um you saw that it's life orb just then um and again a lot of my strategy is going to be around you know waiting out uh, certain things right so i so my slow bro is really heavily built to kind of wait out um a a necrozma it's meant to iron defense up and meant to take on um things like the necrozma directly by by being able to to take very little damage from from it with some iron defenses up and then hit it back hard with iron with body presses and what i'd ultimately decide on is going into the is going into the eternatus here because i know that's going to be able to outspeed i know it's going to be able to do the most damage it's gonna it's my big best source of damage output here and um i'll be able to kind of manage a little bit what i want to do here um he goes out into the serena 
and as I go for the switcheroo, and because it's Prankster, it gets blocked by the Serena, which really does stink. I really thought that I could uh, catch this Gotharita and do something to it. And I go for this Dynamax Cannon onto the Serena, which surprises me a, a little bit, uh, even just looking back on it. Um, I don't know why I didn't respect the Cinderace as much as I probably should have. But, yeah, G a G-Max Fireball, I mean, that is two turns and two KOs. Um, and I'm really not putting myself in the best position by targeting down the Gotharita. Um, yeah, I mean, I probably, yeah, it's, it's, it's just really tough even thinking back as to what I thought because I think the, I think the Gotharita was pretty well handled if I was, it, it was either going to switch out or it was, it was going to get a Scarf Trick onto it. Um, but regardless, this Cinderace is a huge, huge problem. And uh, one interesting thing about this matchup is this is the first time that I'm bringing a a Poison Barb one. Usually I, I stuck to, to, to Dragon Fang generally. Um, but again, I, I, I didn't really respect the Cinderace enough. Meaning that um, my Dynamax Cannon is not going to be as strong as it could be if I did have something like a Dragon Fang or even a Life Orb. But, um, but I, I generally wouldn't, you know bring a life orb if for this kind of a matchup regardless i go for the dynamax cannon and i have i'm happy to imagine i target the, the cinderace this time and i barely miss out on the ko and that looks unfortunately like exactly the range where it would have been taken out if i was dragon bang like i do normally bring but eternatus is so dang bulky that it ends up taking it um i do switch out to, on Slowbro on on the other slot and i'm trying to you know make get get this slow bro going so that um i can it's it's kind of in a position to to do things later on in the match but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm overall just really disappointed in myself for, for how these first few turns went. Because, first of all, if, if I was Dragon Fang, I, I wouldn't have gone down this turn. And if I targeted down the Cinderace earlier, then I wouldn't have um, had to do that. I, I, again, I, I'm at a loss for what I was thinking in, the, in those moments. Um, but regardless, this is going to allow me to bring in... Vicavolt, which kind of deals with a lot of what he has in, in in the back, and really, I, I I want to be able to set up with my slow bro. That's my main goal. And if um and if my Vicavolt could kind of pressure other things in order to make that happen, then I will be more than happy here, right? So here, I believe I I pretty solidly predict a protect onto the Gyarados to kind of buy himself a turn oh but also I don't have bug stab on this which was a huge issue because also so another thing I really didn't respect the 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 uh, Gotharita enough I I thought the biggest threat would be the Necrozma and as many iron defense mods as it could bring as many defensive roosting iron defense mods and slacking off iron, um, iron defense mods as I could bring would be the, the way to go in this matchup and, and you can see like I'm trying to decide what to do because I'm really trying to hard predict this Gyarados protect that I think is gonna come here but um but yeah I, there's a lot that I'm trying to play around he does go for the protect and the knockoff comes in to the Vicovo, which surprised me in the moment because I really did expect um, that Serena to kind of respect the slow bro a little bit more, especially as I, as I go for an iron defense. Um, I think I expect him to, to kind of want to respect my slow bro more um, in, in these coming turns. But um, but that initial kind of targeting down of, of the Vicol surprised me a little bit. Um, and here I'm going to try to get myself healthy by roosting up, it looks like, as I go for another iron defense, trying to set up a, just a little bit more. Again, I here's another situation where I could definitely see, you know, where some interesting team building decisions uh, kind of ended up mattering a lot here because not having protect by forcing on, you know, kind of ro that roost iron, iron defense strategy um, disallowed for protect where protect would have been incredible in this situation. Uh, if I had called that th that protect on the double target, then it would have been an incredibly free turn and I would have been able to maneuver so much better. But um oh and, and also i obviously get uh flinched as i survive on one hp which really did you know stink in the moment um now realistically you could have double targeted next turn but that again is is one of those moments where i could have played with with roos in a protect and then and then you know made things happen um again with getting free turns for my slow bro for kind of getting damage on the rest of his team 
um, even you know making strategic switches but honestly I I was also really really limited by you know just not being able to to maneuver around with my alternatives which if I had the the, the dragon fang which I brought almost every week up until now um, I just uh, would be in a, such a better position here. I do go into this thing because I do want to uh, make some things happen here. I'm down a two mons, so it's going to not be great no matter what happens. But now I'm in a position where I kind of know that he's going to want to target down my my max mon. But again, I got here's another set where I kind of forced on the, the the whole iron defense situation onto it when I kind of didn't need to. It, it doesn't look like, but it looks like I'm deciding on what to do. I would be surprised if I don't max guard just looking back on this. Um, I think that's absolutely the correct play. It, do I get there in the end? No, okay. I, I go for a max ground. I mean, I guess I want that residual damage because um, at, at this point I'm feeling like Slowbro needs that extra residual damage to, to, to do what he needs to do in his overall matchup. But, um, but yeah, I don't know. Probably Max Guard would have been a stronger play. I'm not too too sure. It's 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 honestly difficult to say in this moment. But um, G Max Sandblast has been coming in clutch for the entire season, and I think, um, and this is just an, a, a, another moment where I think G Max Sandblast is just a really really strong play overall. I really do um, love having that that sand team effect and being able to, to kind of mess with it as on top of that sand spit damage. Um, sand spit plus plus sandblast is has been so strong and I and I continue to lean on here um, so it's I mean it's it's it's, it's difficult to regret a, a play like that but um, probably again max guard would have been a little bit stronger as I do get double targeted uh, and yeah we, we do get to take out this Serena which is poggers but um, it, it is it does feel like a little bit too late especially with two mons left on the field but the Gyarados does does take some damage and um and I can't imagine the Gyarados is, go is gonna try to target down my slow bro so in that respect I'm a little bit safe but I'm still gonna have to can you know kind of figure the things out and kind of how to get more damage onto the field how to get more um how to potentially get more KOs out of this you know kind of not great situation that I put myself into but um, we're gonna see whatever the heck he wants to bring out now. Um, but yeah, depending on on whatever he wants to bring out, this would be a fantastic opportunity for a max guard as he as he targets into me. But we're gonna have to see whatever he wants to do. Um, and whatever I want to do, right? Because I, I yeah, I I feel like max guard is a, is a strong play, but who's to say at this point? Um, we're able to get a body press off now. I did not expect. I'm not. I'm really not expecting body press to do a whole lot of damage here. It is resisted and. Honestly, don't know how strong this slow bro is going to be. The slow bro is very, very defensive, but um, but on a resisted hit, it's not. I would be surprised if it does, if it's a two a KO even. Like it, like if it does meaningful damage, and it almost, and it's almost a KO. That that does about like sixty ish, seventy ish percent. Um, and he helping hands into the, into the, Gyarados max guard, so into the Gyarados which hits in, in, in the back guard so that nullifies his turn completely as I get all that damage onto the Gyarados and and, and kind of lets that that uh, sand team damage to clean up which is incredible for me in, in this moment right and it's going to allow me to kind of ideally get a, a, a turn or two more um into this matchup and maybe get an an, 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 another KO if I'm super lucky maybe not maybe two KOs but um this is a very difficult position for me to come back from uh but ultimately I mean there's nothing left to do but to kind of attack right um the slow bro is meant to kind of take on this th this necrozma now in retrospect I do think I made a huge huge misplay I mean especially um in retrospect but I don't think it's it's ever you know that worth it to, to to kind of double target into the Necrozma, although I don't know, maybe that's arguable. I don't know. It's it, it's 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 again, it's difficult to say. But um, I do give him the weakness policy, and all and honestly, I did not expect it to do that little, but it did uh, quite little. Um, he's able to get the photon geyser and KO my my um Cidaconda, and I will be able to. 
body press into the Necrozma, which is going to pick up a KO, which is going to give Slowbro another KO, and uh, 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 and another fun fact, that is the first KO that um, that, that Necrozma is going to be taking up, up to this point in the season, right? Um, but yeah, now it's going to be really difficult to come back from any type of 1v2 situation, so... I don't think there's any real way out of this, especially when the last Mon on the field is the Togekiss. I really, obviously, like, looking back on this, I had a lot of huge flaws in my building and my play, right? I should have respected the Cinderace more. I should have, well, I, I, I should have respected the Cinderace more in team building, and then once I get into the actual battle, I should have respected it more in terms of, you know, just targeting it down when I needed to target it down, and getting more damage on it earlier on, when I had a gosh dang Eternatus that's meant to take down Di Dynamax Pokemon, and then on top of that, just playing my Vigable better, having Protect on my Vigable would have been huge, being able to play, you know, certain maneuvers better, but ultimately, I think a lot of this was decided in team building, but I, I did everything that I could. Ultimately, it's difficult to feel too, too bad about how I played and built, but so much of it just comes down to he built in a way that covered more of his bases than than I did. I think I played with a little bit too much of, of, of Tunnel Vision, and I think it really showed in the outcome and in kind of the situations that i found myself in but uh that's gonna be for me think that's gonna be week six thank you guys so much for watching we'll be back really really soon with more weeks of the abl and other things to come i believe the ubl will be starting up really really soon with that once again thank you guys so much for watching and up again so a couple